What do people think is a scam, but they actually just don't understand it? When I tell them they have a coupon for $50 off when they spend $100, and so far they've spent $60, so they can pick something else out that'll basically be free. Free. Unemployment benefits. There are many that I've worked with that didn't understand that unemployment payments aren't handouts from the government. One employee who truly was let go for no reason other than downsizing just refused to take it no matter how much I tried to explain it to him. It was sad because he really needed it and just couldn't understand that the employer pays into the unemployment fund specifically for this kind of thing. My dad thought Steam was a shady company because $800 was taken off his credit card on a game, he later found out my brother took his card and was the one who spent all that money. Literally anything that requires a signature. Confirmation that they've seen their doctor's care plan and we've reviewed it with them. Refuse to sign. Financial form that will get them free medications that normally cost greater than $1,000 a month. Refuse to sign. Form that allows us to provide them a nutritional supplement at no additional cost. Refuse to sign. Refusing a flu vaccine that could prevent them and the rest of the clinic from dying over the winter and then also refusing to sign the form confirming that they've refused the vaccine. Debit card authorizations. I work at a hotel and the amount of times we get screamed at because people don't understand how their debit card works is way too high. Problems with this are almost a daily occurrence. Most hotels do not charge you when you check in, they wait until you check out. However, they do authorize your card when you check in, and for all intents and purposes this is pretty much the same thing as a charge as far as you, the customer, is concerned. It's not exactly the same thing, the money doesn't officially come out of your account, and the hotel received no money from the authorization, but it still means those funds aren't available to you until the authorization is released. Hotels have to do this. We can't just assume you have the money on your card to cover the amount of your stay. You're checking in now but leaving in three days, if we just trusted that everyone staying would, could pay in full at the end of their stay then we'd have a lot of people who just disappeared at the end of their stay without paying. Nor can we check that your card has the money on it then just operate on the assumption that it will still have the money on it in three days when you check out. People could easily go spend all the money on their debit card and then in three days no longer have the funds to pay, even when they did at check-in. We have to put an authorization for the amount we expect you to owe at checkout, this effectively holds those funds aside so that when we're ready to charge you, at checkout, the money is there. While the authorization is active, you can't use those funds. They're still in your account but can't be spent. This inevitably leads to people thinking we've taken money out of their account that we shouldn't have. People find their debit cards are declined elsewhere, then see the hotel authorization and think it's our fault, when in fact it's because they had just enough to cover the hotel expenses on the card, and were holding those with an authorization. This happens in several places where you use your debit card. Even at gas pumps. When you swipe your card at a pump, it has no clue how much you're going to spend on gas. The gas station picks a number that it feels comfortable with, something a bit higher than what people normally spend on gas, and the pump would authorize your card for that amount. When you're done pumping, the final charge will go through. The only reason people notice this at hotels but not elsewhere is because of the length of time a hold may stay at a hotel. If you're staying a week, that authorization is made at check-in and remains on your account for that whole week until you check out. So pro tip, if you plan on paying a different way when you check out, go ahead and pay that way when you check in. Whatever card you provide at check-in will be authorized at that time, and as with anything else involving banks, it can take a few business days for an authorization to be released on your account. Edit, sorry folks, I can't keep up. I've tried to answer each unique question at least once in the comments. The most common is, why don't you just charge us in full at check-in, I've answered in detail below, but the short version is that what we expect you to owe at check-in and what you actually owe at checkout can be different for various reasons. It takes banks a while to process things like reversals, refunds which could result in a double charge on your bank account for several days. We wait until checkout to make the official charge to save you as much hassle as possible. My grandma thought buying anything online was a scam for years. Amazon, Xbox store, ordering food, etc. She couldn't understand that you could actually buy stuff with your credit card without going to a physical place or saying it over the phone. Edit, she's fine with it now.
The only thing she buys online is her medicine, but she has let me buy things using her card a few times when I was younger. Customer service rep trying to help out in a bro way because they take a general liking to you or empathize with your issue. Like. Don't come back and demand my coworker or manager give you the same deal cause I basically broke company policy to benefit you. I own a business, and I sell a lot of surplus inventory on Craigslist, OfferUp, eBay. I try to get as close as possible to what I paid for it, so I can get my money back. Oftentimes, people don't have the money for a particular item, and I offer that they can leave me a deposit to hold it for them, $25 minus 50 depending on the item, most items are $500 minus 1000 range, just so I don't waste my time holding it. People always assume I'm trying to scam them, even though I write a receipt for them, take my ads down, etc. And I'm a reputable business, they are the ones that put me in this position by not having the money. My mom thinks sites that accept credit card payments are a schematic. We lived in a second world country where most people only paid with cash. When we moved to a much more developed country in Europe and she heard about credit card scammers on the news, that kinda made her think that sites that include credit card payments are shady ha head it 2 2 2 nd not 2 road thanks for pointing it out at it 3, a lot of you asked what second world countries are so here's a wikipedia article about it, am from Serbia an ex Yugoslavian country by the way. Artists who want money for their work. Even for a friend, relative. Doing a piece of art takes time, talent, and effort. Some people want a detailed piece of art that will take hours to complete, and want it for free. Even if you're a friend or family member, it's still a lot of time and work. Please pay artists for their work. I'm begging you. When you're making a new account somewhere and it tell you to enter the email and a password for your account some people think they're asking for the password to your email holy sht I never expected to even get more than 100 upvotes on a comment thanks everyone. Hello we've been trying to reach you about an important safety recall notice for your vehicle edit, oh my god reddit gold and silver. Okay. Ah. Okay. Alright, guys. Serious garbage here. Go get your recalls fixed quit fluffing around its dangerous business. Call a dealership, ask if there are any recalls, get them done. I mean it. Thanks for gold and silver. Who knew a half-assed joke based on the constant incessant nagging of my local Honda dealership would earn me awards. Edit, moreover, I'm glad I've helped educate some people in the seriousness of this topic. Best part of this is that potentially I've helped some people not die from the Takata Claymore style airbag train wreck. I'm happy to have helped you out Redditors. When the mechanic tells you that your brake pads are completely gone and says it's just bare metal to metal. Generic, store brand versions of Tylenol, Aleve, etc. It's the same stuff, probably made in the same factory, just with a different label on it. Yet so many I know refuse to buy the generic, store brand because, it costs less, it can't work as well. People being paid for their time and knowledge. I hear, if you loved animals more and weren't so greedy you would do this for free, every day at my job. I would love to into their office and demand their services for free. Getting a raise that gets you to a higher tax bracket. Seriously, people don't even use Google to verify it. When you get a raise, only the portion of the salary that goes above the bracket is getting the higher taxes. Me in the Aldi parking lot trying to trade someone my quarter for their cart. The air in bag of chips. Holiday, vacation insurance. Having previously traveled to USA, if anything went wrong where I needed medical assistance I would be absolutely fluffed without the insurance. Some old people still think stocks is a scam. Or any financial investment for that matter. Internet connection speeds. They get 100 MB per second speeds and think it's 100 MB per second not realizing it's only 12. 5 MB per second. Then they claim they have slow speeds because they can't download XYZ game in 4 seconds. Preventive dental maintenance. I've lost count of the people who have proudly told me over the years that having your teeth cleaned by a hygienist is a scam and that plaque is not really a thing. I've also had a surprisingly large number of seemingly rational people tell me that dentists create holes in your teeth so they can scam you with fillings. Unclaimed property. What I am referring to is most, all, us states have a website you can visit and enter your name and it will search through a government database for any assets, usually money, that is owed to you. 
For example, let's say you were on the budget plan for your electric bill, and one day you cancel it and move away. Your remaining money sitting in that account was probably mailed to your old address, then returned to the sender. Now they give it to this government unclaimed property division, where it sits in this database for something like 10 years, after which time if it's not claimed, the government keeps it. So yeah, sometimes I search my friends' names and let them know if there is unclaimed property that they can claim. Usually such messages are ignored or they try telling me my account was hacked due to suspicious messages they've received from me.